Hello and welcome to Basketball Talk Pro. My name is Ron Ecker. Uh, as you saw on the little uh, card there, uh, that um, we are going to have a uh, another discount for. Uh, there's a lot of newer people now who didn't get advantage of it. I want more people to take the course, and I'm I'm willing to go down on the price uh, to do so. Uh, but uh, so go ahead, we'll, it, it will give more, more information out to you on, on that. Uh, but the reason is we just need to reach out to people to get them into this course. And you see what, the, what Roger had to say about it. He's an experienced coach, 20 years. So, um, you know, it, it pays off. Uh, it really does, uh, both in, on your credentials and, and on the floor. Well, today I'm, we're going to talk about coaching the game. I don't know that I really um, wanted to do this, but I felt I should. Uh, I've thought about it many, many times during the year. Uh, the reason is that it's really kind of a personal thing, how you approach the game and coach the game. Uh, everybody has their way. I can't give you any way but my way. And I hope that by doing that, you can get some ideas. Uh, I think that it will help you just to know the uh, large panorama of things that you have to uh, or should or want to do to be prepared and be ready for the game and coach a good game uh, and leave your players after the game in the right, in the right way. So I put, it's three parts. One part is preparation, getting ready for the game. Another one is the game itself. And then the third part uh, is the aftermath. The game's over. Well, how do you handle that? Uh, and uh, because it's important, uh, you, you'll see what I mean when we get to it. So let's talk about preparation. I do a lot of preparation. Uh, I, I acquire a lot of data. Uh, if we have time, sometimes we don't have time, but we get as much as we can. And if we don't have a lot of time, I know the key things that I need to know going into the game. Uh, so it may be, uh, you know, we'd be on the road and, you know, the game, back to back, the game is over. The game, last game, you're getting ready for the next game. You might be up till 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning getting that data together, you and your assistants. Uh, but it has to be done. Um, for me, it does. And my way of handling this is when it's all put, to get, you know, put together, that we've got everything we want, we know their plays, we know their best plays, uh, all of those things are there. Then the plan is the next thing. Here's how I do the plan. Uh, the, my assistants talk to me during the course of the filming. Uh, you know, they, they put in their two bits worth as far as what they see and what they think and what they've heard. Uh, and I listen to all that. Uh, but I don't say much. Uh, when we're done, I go home and go to bed and sleep for as long as I can. Sometimes it's only a couple hours. But I do all my planning in the morning when I wake up. I don't go to bed with any preconceived notion. I try to keep my mind blank. And when I wake up in the morning, uh, I get a cup of coffee and then I plan. I get the plan put together. My assistants are used to the system, so they understand it. And I try to break the plan down to three things on offense and three things on defense. I don't want to overburden them. And th those three things are generally sometimes pretty simple also. Um, I don't want them going into the game thinking of a, a myriad of thoughts. I want them to go in with just a few things that they can focus on uh, during the course of the game. So their mind is clean. Uh, and not cluttered. That's my way of, of, uh, of doing things. Then you have to apply the plan. 
Now you may have time to put it in a, a day before the game in your practice or two days before you before the game. Um, uh, but sometimes, you know, in professional basketball, most of your application, most of the time, is in shoot around the day of the game. You get about uh, 45 minutes, uh, and um, but it works if you're if you're uh, if you're well prepared. Uh, so it depends on your allotment of time to when you actually apply the plan, put it in with the team, talk to them, show them things. So, it's a lot of hard work. Season wears you out, just wears you right out. Um, but uh, remember this, every, I don't care what your schedule is, 10 games, 25 games, 50 games, 82 games, every one of these games is important. That's your livelihood. Uh, and don't let anybody tell you anything different. Uh, they say, hey, well, you know, I've heard all the goody two-shoes talks. Well, uh, you know, you got to teach character, and I do that. Uh, you got to teach, you know, uh, being model citizens, and I try to do that. But I also teach winning uh, because I think you need to have that. Uh, they need to understand how hard winning is and how hard you have to work to be uh, successful at it. Uh, and I want to get that point across to you. Um, well, now the game itself. First of all, you know, the activities before the game. Uh, depending on what kind of a situation you're in, but most of us are in the situation always. A game is a big thing. Uh, it's an, a kind of an extravaganza. Uh, and you have to uh, have, uh, you have, your players have to be able to deal with it, and you have to be able to deal with it. So having some type of organization on that area between the time that the players get to the arena and the, the game is very important. Now we keep our organization very simple uh, on that, but the players clearly understand uh, what, what we want. You know, I ask our players to be in the, in the arena an hour and a half before the game. I'm in the arena an hour and 45 minutes before the game. A lot of the players are already there. Uh, that's okay, but I want to know when every player is in the arena. It doesn't have to be in a locker room, doesn't have, it can be outside, but I want to know he's in the arena. I know that uh, he's here, there, and I don't have to think, uh, think about that. So there's a number of things there that uh, you, you want to uh, have, how to, you know, when do they get dressed, all of these things. Uh, and, and what to what to uh, they do you know what if they if they don't go up and shoot like some players don't you know uh, it, it, it maybe in your situation you can't they can't because there might be a preliminary game before it but all of that's got to be taken into consideration uh, give them a simple organization so that uh, by uh, and, keep, and keep it consistent. So after a while, they just know everything about getting ready for the game. They can do it in their own way, but they know the limits and the time schedule. Uh, we always meet at least 15 minutes before we take the floor. They know that. You know, they watch the clock, and then, uh, you know, usually uh, when I'm ready, they're ready. Uh, so uh, as far as... Uh, what happens in the locker room, uh, I always put those three things on the board, uh, both offensively and defensively. And I always show them film. That's a hard job. Uh, if you don't have any help, uh, you know, and I've been in those situations, uh, it's hard work. You know, I'm, uh, it's, it takes a lot of your time. But always, since I started coaching, I have made, I have done the film. Uh, I know most head coaches don't, but I did. 
uh, because I don't believe that film guys or even assistants know what to show the players that as far as what you want them to see. So I do it. And, uh, but we have films before the game. I want the players, the last thing I want them to see is in action the plays that we've been talking about, how we're going to defend them. I want them to see the defense uh, in, in real life, not uh, on a blackboard situation. Very brief, maybe three, four minutes, uh, five minutes of film, if, if you organize it right. Um, and, you know, you got to have something to show them on. Uh, uh, listen, we've lugged uh, little, you know, monitors and uh, computers and stuff uh, around a lot to, in order to do that. But it's, it, it, it was worth it in my, in my estimation. Okay, now the players take the floor. Uh, I don't like them to have more than about 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes to warm up. I don't, I, they, they will get warm in that length of time. I tell them what they should do, but I never, I don't have detectives up there looking at them. I just assume they're going to do it the way that I, I ask them to. If I, something happens that I know they're not, then I have to step in. But it's no sense looking for trouble. Uh, you know, it'll come to you. Um, at that time, uh, usually, you know, I, I chat with the assistants. If there's more than one uh, or, or just one, um, it, it's a nice, quiet time. We chat back and forth, you know, um, and then, but always, I, and they know I'm going to do this, I always find a place where I can be by myself for about four or five minutes. Uh, I want to be quiet. Uh, I want to remind myself of things that I got to be careful of, uh, that I don't do, some things that I got to remember to do. Um, but I want to be relaxed, and I am. I'm nervous right up to that time, but I relax myself uh, for those few minutes. Then I get ready and, and, and uh, take the floor. Uh, and now the game itself. Well, I'm going to tell you something. No matter how hard you pre prepare, when they throw that ball up, the light's gone. Uh, from then on, you're not you're not really in control. I I call it uh, controlled chaos that takes place. That plan that you made can go out the window right in the first two minutes. Somebody gets hurt, somebody gets in foul trouble. All of a sudden, uh, you know, it everything changes. I want to be ready to make decisions on the fly. And a lot of those decisions uh, sometimes are decisions that I don't even understand myself. Uh, but it comes from preparation. All that stuff I've been putting in my mind, I remember or recall uh, under very high pressured situations. I want to be free. Uh, I don't want clutter. I don't want to try to have to remember hundreds of things. Uh, I want to be, let my instincts flow at that time. Uh, and so I prepare myself uh, for that. I'm prepared for chaos, but I don't, I think any, any coach that says that there isn't chaos on the, on the, in the game, uh, it, it maybe isn't looking at it uh, quite accurately uh, because very few of us have uh, control. The timeout situation should be organized before you get into the game. You know, the players should know what they do at timeouts. How much, when, they, when you start talking and, and before that halftime the same way. Uh, I, I, you know, we want a three minute warm up. Uh, I want to talk to them for about five to six minutes. Uh, I give them the rest of the time, I mean I, uh, the first part of the, the half, to get themselves 
uh, if they got to go to the restroom, you know, do all those things that they need to do. Some of them have little gimmicks that they do for themselves. They have time for doing that. I bring them together about five minutes before and I tell them then what I think uh, we have to do. And um, and then, you know, you have to, they, they take the floor and, uh, and do their little warm up. The bench should be also organized before the game uh, during practice, you know. Players should know how to handle themselves on the bench and assistants the same way. Uh, I do not like, in fact I forbid it, assistants running up and down the sideline yelling at players. And stuff. That, no, assistants are silent. Uh, they are helpers. But they do it without chaos, without craziness. Uh, we, players can't take two, three, four people yelling at them. I don't want that. The only voice I want them to hear in the game is mine. Uh, and so uh, we control that very carefully. That doesn't mean that the assistants can't have suggestions. They do. But uh, n n not talking directly to the players. I talk to the players. <coughs> well, then you find out where you're at. You know, you find out how the game goes. Uh, you win or you lose. You know, it's that simple. We have, we have a great life. There, there's no rationalizing. That scoreboard up there tells you where you're at. And uh, so, uh, now you have to face what I call the aftermath of the game. I'll give you some advice that took me a long time to learn by myself. That talk after a game, keep it very brief, very short. Sometimes you're related, the players are happy. Give them, you know, give them their congratulations, tell them the nice things, and get, and get out of there. And let them have their moment uh, to... Uh, Enjoy it. If you lost, sometimes you're very angry at your, your players. Don't try to tell them uh, all the things that are wrong and um, at that time. You don't know for sure. You know, uh, things can change at 2 a.m. in the morning after you've done film work and you t you've looked things over. Get yourself together. Get the data, get the things you want to say accurate and based on fact, not on your emotions. Uh, and you'll have a lot better uh, rapport. I like to leave the, this brief talk with the, the admonition that about the next game. I want them to enjoy the win and even despair the loss. But I want them to move on as quickly as possible to the next game. It's over with. Can't do anything about it, but learn from it. And we try to do that. But uh, we don't want to just sit on it forever, whether we won or, or lost. The next game. So I always say something before I leave uh, about the next game. Well, I hope that was helpful to you. I just, well, there's much more to uh, that, uh, that part of coaching uh, than I could get into in 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, but uh, the major thing is find your own way. Find your system. Find how you want things uh, to run for you. In time, you'll work it out. I know you will. Uh, maybe this will help you a little bit to... to uh, see some of the things you have to be, have to think about. Well, I want to uh, urge you to look in tomorrow. This film will be shown uh, on Wednesday uh, and, and only for one day. Then on Thursday we're showing a video about, uh, you know, the, the um, anniversary. Uh, and then We'll show this film again on Thursday. So you'll see it for two, three days, but it'll be broken up uh, a little bit. So 
look forward to seeing everybody uh, tomorrow. Uh, I, I, you know, it's nice to have a have a year behind you, and uh, we get smarter, you know, as we go along. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.